Alrighty, good afternoon everyone. It's 2 p.m. November 16th here in Chicago. My name is Elvin, also known as Epoxy, and today we're going to be casting uh, Week 5 of the C-Star League games for Division 3 as they take on Wheaton College, Wheaton JV team. Uh, picks and bands have already gotten their way started. Um, first round of bands, seeing Zerath, Heimer, Nautilus taken out from IIT as they will be starting off the game on the blue side. Wheaton College going for just two bands, it looks like, with just the Garen and the Yasuo. Uh, first pick phase here, it's going to have Darius, Kane, and Lissandra here for IIT. Looking like everyone's just picking their own lane at the start of it. Uh, followed up by the Kale Echo Victor uh, for we in college. So, um, uh, second round of second band phase coming around. It's going to be the Sivir. Uh, going to be targeting Pirate Windows there. Um, it's just really the support and marksman left, it seems like, on both sides. So, uh, maybe some of those meta eight meta marksmen, Kaisa, Azaya, um, could be taken out. It's going to be actually the Misfortune, though, um, here for IIT. Could be a target pick against Flaskino here from Wheaton, if he, that is uh, one of the champs that he's comfortable with. Um, but yeah, normally I, uh, don't start the stream right with the casting, but I think we had a little bit of a delayed start, um, nevertheless we're on our way to it, it's gonna be the last ban here for we in with the brand pick being taken out, and actually hold on, uh, someone mentioned that I should play music while these pick ban phases go on to, uh, improve the stream quality, so I'll play some League of Legends music. Give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Now I can have the audio of League right by it during pick and ban. It's going to be the, uh, actually it is going to be a meta, uh, there for IIT for its last ban, it's going to be the Kaisa ban coming out, and that leaving uh, leaves IS, uh, excuse me, not ISU, Wheaton to finish out with the Ezreal. It's going to be Rakan being hovered here, but it's going to be, uh, the rest of the bot lane going to be picked out in this, uh, switch over here for blue team. Looking like the Zyra Rakan duo in the bot lane should be pretty strong in the early game in a 2v2 situation. Um, looking like ISU, not too much of a tank line here. Going to have to see if they're going to maybe go for perhaps a, a Braum, um, maybe a Thresh to see if they can get picks uh, against that poke. Uh, but IIT's with a decent amount of bruising damage with that Darius could be uh, enough to steamroll through. It is going to be the Braum actually followed through with it. So Braum with the Flash Ignite going to be loading up onto the Rift pretty soon here, about a minute. We have the three minute delay, so we're going to go on a quick break until then. Uh, but yeah, it should be an exciting game. IIT is going to be starting off onto the blue side. If you're watching us on the stream today, be sure to hit us up with a hashtag IIT win, hashtag Wheaton win. Uh, for who do you think is going to be taking game, game one and potentially this series? Um, but yeah, um, uh, once we hit the timer, I'll switch over to the uh, break screen and then we'll be back in a few minutes, all right? Sounds good.
Alrighty. Back after the break. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in for today's game. Again, this is now week five of CSL Gold League's uh, matches for the semester. And this is Illinois Tech versus Wheaton College uh, JV team as uh, we load up onto the Rift. It's going to be IIT here with their roster of JMars9 at the top lane, Darius, Cheese, and Eggs with the Kane Jungle, Disparogi with the Lissandra mid, Pirate Windows and Wicked Scotty in the bot lane with Desire and Vrakan. Vrakan, where's our skin? You're uh, slacking out on here with Pirate pulling out the work, but it's going to be followed against Wheaton College's roster with the KO, Echo, Victor as real and Braum support. Um, again, it uh, Brom Ezreal versus Zyra Khan, just for my comments here from a support main, um, it's all in Zaya's feathers. If the Brom shield is unavailable, she'll instantly win in a, uh, in a trade there, but if it is up, it does nullify a lot of that potential damage output from the Zaya. Rakan able to slip in and out, uh, if he gets tagged with the Brom Q, would have to play a little bit more conservatively, but again, uh... I am confident, at least in the level 2, uh, IIT should come out in favor for that. Lissandra versus Victor. As long as Lissandra manages her mana resources, she'll be fine. Um, not too much to comment on to that. But we're going to be entering here week 5, actually, with um, Illinois Tech C team on a 2-1 and one record. Uh, so only their lost uh, facing against DePaul, and then one of their weeks they had a bye. I don't know if that considers it as a free win. I think C Star League does say it is, but I count my wins as actual games. So uh, two one is going to be what it is. Hopefully the IIT uh, Division uh, C team finishes it up with the uh, to make it three and one for today. Going to be loading it up. It's going to be IIT here onto the blue side. Rakan not actually leaving shop yet. Now he's on his way there, but. Um, doesn't look like we're going to see any potential five men invades. Only going to be the Victor and Bronk coming out here. It's going to be tagging JMars, but that should pretty much turn away any other future prospects. Taking a quick look at our summoners check. It's actually going to be interestingly only the mid laners here holding the TP. Uh, Kale does have the Klepto, but uh, with the heal, that's going to be interesting against Jmar's Ghost uh, to follow up in terms of that. A uh, little bit of banter coming out on chat with some good luck, have funds. But looking like both sides are going to be going with the uh, uh, traditional start with the red buff, blue buff, respectively. Um, yeah, what something that I think we'll definitely want to keep an eye out for will be if, if uh, this pathing is... The way I see it will be the, that three minute mark when those junglers hit level three to see who goes up for the top lane first. It's going to be uh, likely likely a jungle game to get the thing started, hopefully, but um, we'll see. IIT definitely enjoys their, their team fight capability, so as long as they don't suffer too much from a laning phase issue, I remain hopeful. It's going to be Echo actually finishing up the blue buff and then going to be actually heading over to Kane's Raptors, but he's not even going to be able to see anything. Could be an extended delayed gank here. It's going to be Echo coming all the way down here for the Krugs. There is a Tribush Ward here, but it's going to be inspi expiring in the next 10 seconds. No vision here for Echo even being put down. It's going to be actually delaying him quite a bit as Kane finishes up his third camp with the Wolves here. Level 1 already, Wicked Scotty taking a couple of decent amount of damage, looking like he still has the summoners available, but likely being a little bit too ambitious starting off with the W, probably bit off a little bit more than he could chew. It's going to be a nice stun there from Disparogi. Victor going to respond in kind, getting a little bit of that uh, phase summoners or whatever that is. Lane pushing itself here for Jmars is a prime spot here for a gank opportunity if Decane does choose to do so. Kale had used a ward earlier here in the beginning phases. It's going to be seeing the pings out. We're going to keep our eyes on to that. Level 3 here with the double buff means that he should be good, but the Kale is wary of it. This wave here pushing is the time to go for it. Does 
do they have the chance of looking at it? It's going to be them seeing that the cane has come out, but no ghost here activated from Darius. Looks like they're just going to take the long way around. But the Kale choosing to come back is going to actually leave her behind. She does have the summoners up. It's going to be the flash already started off here. A summoners as well. No summoners here could leave the first blood here available. It is going to go to the Darius. Well played here from the Hawks. A initial delay uh, from that first approach. Didn't seem to think that the Kale seemed to think that uh, she had nothing to worry about. But with a cane like that. Uh, it's definitely going to still have him in the driver's seat, especially with the Echo Roam that we saw in the Red Jungle earlier, and uh, not taking anything in that. It's going to be a uh, while for Kale, Kale to get back into the lane uh, without the TP to help her out, and with no summoners, it's going to be a prime setting for another gank, perhaps. Kale going to be finishing up the scuttle here. IIT making their way uh, here in the bot side uh, with a... Pretty even CS trading for the most part. Lissandra a bit ahead of the mana. It's actually going to be starting things off with the cane with the gank here. Going to be taking only one tower shot. It's going to be forcing the flash out. But Lissandra without an ignite or if anything is not going to likely lead into anything else. The ward actually doesn't catch him. <laughs> I think. Hard to see in that angle. But I don't think I saw the animation for that ward being actually inside the bush. Could be a... Won't think too much on that though. It's going to be the second scuttle here. It's going to be finished up here for the cane. It's going to have him be nicely ahead of the echo. I think it's going to be uh, two, three hundred gold by the time he finishes that. A couple of pings coming out as they're looking to see when he will come back. The ward will actually not catch echo as he comes back from the uh, from the base. But as he finishes up this gromp, excuse me, Kane does have the smite available, but IIT has got the read on it. Can he finish it up? It's actually going to be one more auto. He could. He does have it. But the stun is going to be likely not enough. It's going to be a repayment here uh, on the Rakan. He's going to be able to dash out. Will they be able to respond anymore? That's a red buff here available. Nice heal there. Nice collapse there from the Lissandra. Any more follow-up though? Darius here going to be looking for another trade of his own. Landing a decent amount. Look at that slow. One more auto will do it. It's actually going to just be it's the spin to win Q. To finish it off, and that's going to put J Mars in a nice spot for the rest of the until level six at least. Good roam there from Lissandra there to help things out. Only Zaya having to blow use the flash still with her. Uh, excuse me, Zaya only having to use her heal leaves her just fine. And yeah, good uh, good approach for IIT to go for the invade. Good for Rakan to at least be there. Uh, hopefully they were pinging it out as they saw they had to read onto it. It's going to be a couple of trades. Braum Shield going to be up. The damage is actually going to be scaring him quite a bit to the point that he has to use the heal preemptively to save that Braum. Uh, but again, like I said, the shield for Braum is uh, really, really what you need. It's going to be a level 6 J-Bars on his way here. It's going to be just decimating through this Kale. Going to be using the Ghost already up again. Goes cooldown much slower. It's going to be one more auto. We'll do it. And look at that lead from Jmars. Well, we know what uh, for sure. Wheaton's going to be banning for game two if, they, <laughs> if the IIT takes the win with this for sure. Actually, even if they don't take the win, I think they've learned their lesson. Uh, ban out the Darius for sure. Going to be Liz Kane just hitting his level six. And Echo is insanely behind here. Uh, already at the 7 minute mark with about 3k behind. 3 kills and a bounty here on Darius. It's going to put him hugely ahead. Look at that CS lead. It's going to be almost 40 plus CS with already doubled the gold. 3.6, 3.7k against a 1.4. Kale's not going to be any, going to be on the, have any map presence at all, especially without the TP. Um, so it's going to be a tough time for her for sure to see if we can come back from that. Keeping our eyes on the mid lane. If I was Echo, I'm, I'd be trying to focus to be getting to level 6. Um, but... We'll have to see. Really, a lot of the lanes here for uh, Wheaton struggling here. So, could be a little bit of a one-sided match. It's actually going to be Echo coming here for a gank for himself. Lissandra has to E to get herself right back out. It's going to be as IIT is starting to drag. The drag is still healthy. Do they see the collapse? There is going to be a ward place, but does IIT want to commit anymore? That's going to be a very low Lissandra here. Uh, 
with just 90 health, she's not going to be in the fight anymore. That's going to be drag secured, though, for uh, IIT as they committed to resources for Lissandra without the kill. Cheese and Eggs come in here for a gank of his own. Victor putting preemptively the E down. Uh, not going to see anything more, though. Level 6 not hit by the supports yet. Uh, Rakan just a little bit ahead here from the prom. So if we do see maybe a level 6 dive, could be could have some potential, but... Um, yeah, this wave's completion will definitely have Rakan be level 6, but I don't think the Hawks will be going for anything more. There we go. It's going to be Daria is going to be internally pushing up this lane with that advantage, and he's already getting so much turret plating here, just probably going to be able to finish it as well. But the roam here from IIT, they do have to drift on it. There is no wards here. Could we see the 1v3, the 1, 2v3 perhaps? Kane will not actually be there to help, but the Lissandra does have to TP. It is going to be the TP being used here. We're going to be starting 2v3. The ult already being used insanely early here from the Kale. She's going to have her ult to help her out here. Jmar looks like he still wants to be going for the fight. That's going to be Alessandra. They're going to be the first kill going on for Darius. Still so much damage here. And the passive here from Lissandra is actually helping things out just a bit. Jmar wants to kill, but it's going to be taking two tower shots here. I don't think we're going to be seeing any more flash here from the victor. Anything more to see? One auto is not going to be able to do it. IIT able to walk out with two kills in their favor. Kane here looks like he wants to finish things off. He's going to be starting to take the aggro. But that could be dangerous. It's going to just be the victor coming back with a kill. But that's not going to be any shutdown gold. Uh, and first tower here going over for the Hawks pretty early at 10 minutes. No, Kane. Kane level 2 though is going to run away. He's going to actually force the flash. I'm going to flash right after to follow up. Uh, I don't know about the flash. Maybe he could have looked at flashing down. Might have had an outplay potential if he had a, if he had the uh, bounce plant, the red plant. Either way, um, it's going to be the victor actually going to be using the TP to get back into lane early as Lissandra is going to have to uh, glide herself back up to the to the mid. Going to lose a couple of these minions here, but should be okay. Uh, looks king. I'm not. What does Lost Chapter and Seeker's Arm Guard have to do together? It's going to be Darius actually using Ghost pretty early. I'm not sure if he's already going to be looking for a dive. Going to just walk right up slowly to him and go for the autos. J Mars is unstoppable right now with the dominating coming out. Uh, Echo here will likely just be killed straight off. I mean, Echo Lissandra with her ult available in the next 5 seconds is going to be instantly able to stop him in his tracks. Doesn't look like they're going to go for it. It's going to be another tier 1 here falling. Could be seeing another roam for the Darius as he's there to help out the rest of his team. Good plays coming all across the board here. IT definitely looking to put themselves onto the map early here with already a uh, 7k gold lead here at the at the 11 minute mark. Not too much that uh, Wheaton has available. Decale still so behind, uh, just only having half of one item, whereas. Triforce already completed for the Darius. It's going to be the ult being used there by the Echo. J Mars looks like he wants to go for more. Taking a decent amount of damage there. Three tower shots is not going to be enough, but looking like the, we're going to see the Darius back here. Turret plating's not going to fall until a little bit, so uh, really just the bot turret to clear out here in order to get all of the uh, turret gold available. Kane's still hovering, though. Looks like he wants to be getting more. Could he be looking for a potential roam on the blue buff? Uh, he's still coming around, for sure. He's going to actually be able to get his eyes onto the blue buff. Victor is on his way, though. He does put a ward. He will see the echo. But I think Kane should be able to get it just before. Ping's not coming here from the Brom that they want to be looking for. They are going to see that the ward is going to be put down, though. Are we going to be seeing any more follow-up, though? The collapse is here from Wheaton. Do they want to go for any more? It's going to be Cheese and Eggs going to be instantly bopped by the Ezreal. He's going to have to force himself to flash out. Not sure if he had faith in the W being able to extend all the way past here. Uh, so no summoners available. Zaya does have her ult available, but I don't think they're going to be looking, wanting to look for any more. Or is it? Lissandra going to start things off. 
Taking some damage here. Going to be getting a nice knock up there. But IIT Pirate Windows here to collapse. Going to be getting a couple members here down already with the stun. Braum with no mana. Not going to be able to have the shield available either. Uh, and it's going to just be a one for one trade here. Lissandra is falling down to the uh, to the victor I believe. Um, but Zaya going to be able to get some kills of her own here. Three, Both her and Darius with the perfect KDAs. Uh... And Darius is like, you know what, Kale, you've had enough fun alone. I'm here to keep you company now. Back again at it. But, uh, again, Kale early game is, uh, it's not fun when you're behind, especially when you don't get those, uh, that level 11, level 16 change to the kit. It's going to be a smite being used here, but that's all we're going to be seeing. Turret plating going to be finally falling down here as it is unavailable, but uh, not too much left in it. Looking like IIT might want to be starting themselves with the Infernal Drake here available. And who's here to collapse? Echo just finishing up the rep buff. It's not going to be making it on time, but he's going to walk right into a Braum. There is using Ghost early here. Without the flash, it's going to just be easy pickings there for, uh, for that Darius. And he is going to be 7-0-1. Infernal Drake now falling is going to be another wave here coming in for IIT. The Darius setting his sights onto that as real. Um, all Rakan needs, honestly, is just going to be one touch with the ult, and I think they're good to close it in the bag. As real with his flash available, this is going to be the only tool that he's going to be used to be able to get off here. It looks like they're going to just safely wait for the. Nope, they're going to go for uh, the dive, but just the, uh, the Darius passive is just going to be enough to finish it off. It's actually going to be the Lissandra looking for a kill here onto the S-Real. She does not have her ult available. Nice ult there from Echo. Try to see what she can take out. But the Q delay from uh, the Echo as it comes back to him is going to finally be able to get that Lissandra. 1v1 here as Kane looks for his own kill against the uh, Kale. He's going to be able to take her down. IT not kidding around here in this map. Wanting to make sure that they're making a statement here with this game one. It's going to be a Darius waiting in bush here. They look like they want to go for the collapse. But if we see... Uh... Nope, doesn't look like we're going to look for any more. Still so much time available, actually. Herald still up. If uh, IIT is looking for objective controls now. As we kind of transition out of this early game phase with all tier 1s here from Wheaton taken out. IIT... Still full health bot turret. Only about 1.5k here. 1k here. But all of their tier 1s pretty healthy. So having a lot of time to choose what they want to uh, take from the map next. If they're wanting to uh, keep this pace up. Jmar's looking like he's confident to the point of a 1v5. Boldly going into the jungle without... Barely any vision there to sustain for him. It's going to be Kane starting things up with Shelly though. Lissandra and uh, Kane will be taking care of it while he waits into the bush. IIT already going to be seeing the three members here from Wheaton as they approach the Raptor camp. But this camp here, this bush, not going to be seen by yet uh, as they group. But there's not much that they've got available. It's going to be... Jmar starting things up, going to be using the ult onto the Echo of all things. And look at that, kills coming across the board. Another kill there? Looking like they want to go for a dive to that point, but it's only going to be... Uh... It's going to be three kills coming across. Cheese and eggs, no! Oof, spooky. I think IIT forgot that there was a tier 2 still available. It's going to be... Kane putting down that Herald with still 10 seconds left here for Wheaton. About 5 seconds left for Wheaton to respawn. It's going to definitely be getting this first inhib turret. Could we see any more follow-up? Jmar still pretty healthy. Could be leading the pack. He does have the Ghost available to look for any strong initiation. Ult from Ezreal does tag the Kane. He's not going to be luckily looking for any more fights. But that damage there and Shelly's still alive. No members from IIT falling as of yet. Jmar is with the ghost. Look at that damage coming through. Just the Q going to be finishing him off. Shelly's still alive here. Already taking down the inhib turret to that point. The passive here from Lissandra still doing so much damage. Not going to be... And Darius finally falls here. Uh, Darius finally falling. Going to be giving the 700 gold to the victor. But too little too late, unfortunately. It's going to be IIT cleaning house here. 
teleporting themselves onto the map early. Good lord. Oh god. Ah! Gonna be IIT finishing it all the way up here. Please, 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 please. Alright, there we go. Alright, there we go, there we go. I'm good. Well, not much to commentate on that besides a pretty dominating performance here from Illinois Tech uh, as they take uh, map one here for uh, for the matchup here. Not too much to really commentate on that. I think it's just um, the classic uh, beaten by Lane and then Darius just able to steamroll uh, all throughout all through. Uh, Wheaton's comp, you know, Kale Top, it's just, I, I think without the TP or without a way to sustain yourself in lane, it's just, I'm not sure. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that their top laner also does not have a level 30 account. So if I had to guess, like, I don't even think he has like a decent amount of champion rosters on that account to be able to play. So maybe he's just stuck on the Kale. But level 27, you definitely have your summoner spells. So I, I having no TP, I think, is not because like he's underleveled or anything. It's just because he's straight up. Maybe just is unfamiliar with the, uh, with the matchup. Who knows? Um, I think only member walking away with the perfect KDA is Pirate Windows. Uh, not too much to be said for the two v two. Um, you rarely see, at least I rarely see like in gold, games both teams willing to die at that last HP for that trade. It really is just poke, poke, poke until you're just able to wait on the ADC to make just that one mistake to collapse. But um, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, and then once the Darius got over to be able to dictate the map pace, uh, a couple of objective controls, particularly the second Infernal Drake, uh, we saw the Lissandra um, come in from mid and then they tried to move up onto her, but they were still waiting at that blue buff entrance. And then, uh, yeah, Pirate got a pretty nice three-man ult there to scare everyone off. Uh, and get, got the kill on Echo, and then started just being able to be fine on her own 2v2. As real uh, bot lane for Wheaton, really not having much of a choice, not much of a say in the matter. I do like how they had the uh, wherewithal to collapse onto the uh, a couple of those cane rooms for those blue jungles, but... Uh, really, the Echo Jungle, that roam level 1 was just... Uh, level 2, excuse me, right after he cleared the blue buff was just really, I think, unnecessary. If you know Kane, you should always know that he will either always start off Raptors or he will always start off Red and then just finish one or the other straight off first because it's of, of just the insane clear speed. I, I don't see a world in where he would want to go for for Krux. And, and knowing that he can protect... Uh, J Mars for a level three gank right after, as we saw, right? He just passes path this way for the three minute mark. It's uh, yeah. I, I think if Echo has a better game, if he if he just sticks with his jungle, doesn't look for any kind of crazy roams, he should be okay. I think we we would have a much more exciting game uh, to see the junglers match each other. A lot of these ganks or a lot of these objectives, you could see Echo was just not able to keep up pace. Kane already hitting level six before the uh. Before, while the Echo was still level 4, finishing up red buff, so... A good game 1, to be said. Um, and, oh, we actually have a decent viewership today. 8 viewers. Appreciate everyone being able to stop by today. Uh, that's nice. It looks like the pro draft is getting itself started, but... Uh, Okay, so that, that explains it. So I think the teams actually do their picks and bans online. Uh, I don't have access to that right now, but that's fine. It's uh, I'll just comment on it in terms of... Uh, from my casting chair. That's <laughs> um, fine. I'll just, I'll just cast pick and pen the actual phase. Mm. 
I guess while we wait, I'll just put on some side music. I won't go on official break screen, but just so that there's something to take up the void of uh, no sound.
Yeah. All right. I apologize. I lied. Even though I said I wasn't gonna go go to break, I went to break screen anyway. Uh, didn't have uh, anything to comment about, so just went to go on a break to uh, pass the time. But we are back now as the teams have finished their uh, pro draft. Um, so I won't take too seriously the bans. I'll take it with a grain of salt, but. The picks will come across uh, looking like Wheaton is going to be here. Game 2, selecting the blue side, so IIT will be switching sides over on the red team. Uh, it's going to be a couple bands uh, already taking out one of each of the champions that we saw from Game 1. Lissandra mid, going to be removed. It's going to be Echo, uh, likely targeting Daddy Dan from Wheaton College again. Um, not too much. Maybe, maybe it's a skin thing. He just didn't want to be flexing that true damage skin, uh, <laughs> onto the map. Who knows? It's going to be, uh, the Yasuo Heimer, uh, Yasuo for Wheaton. I don't, unless they've been practicing, like, Yasuo Bracket spot lane. I, I don't know who else plays Yasuo on their, on IIT. Um, it is going to be a Cape Bando. That is definitely a target on Pirate. Uh, he does enjoy that marksman. We did see uh, the MF ban as well from game one, so only new thing here it was to Echo, but I didn't really see too much of a problem with it. I mean, he wasn't landing any crazy gank stunts. He wasn't uh, too too affluent in the game, except for maybe like that last play where he did an ult recall to take out Lissandra. Who knows? Uh, could just be a matchup that IIT just doesn't want to see potentially with this new comp that they're going to try. It's going to be Jay Mars, though. First pick going to be on the Darius again. Uh, surprising to see that uh, we didn't let that one go through. Perhaps they're thinking Darius is not the problem, in fact. Uh, what they need to do to combat against that. Looks like they want to be going for more tanky comps with the Mundo, with the Zac available. Uh, that should be a much more exciting matchup to see in terms of the gank potential with Zac flinging himself all across the map. It's going to be Vi Jungle and Fizz mid here for IIT though to finish off the rest of the first pick phase here. Um, with the ult, uh, with Vi's ult able to access the back line, it's a, uh, it's much easier uh, than Zach's E as you can actually sail over your opponents instead of going through them. But um, a lot of flank opportunity here for IIT already um, with uh, with Wheaton's comp. Looks like they're going to have to rely pretty heavily on the Zac to be able to start off the fights, per se. Um, looking like they're going to go for a conservative bot lane, though. And to counteract that flanking, they're going to actually put the Morgana, Morgana support in line uh, to be able to have that black shield available to, in order to protect that Ash likely. So this is a going to be a pretty traditional uh, five-man comp from Wheaton that we're going to be seeing. Xerath is going to be played here in the mid lane. It's going to have... Um, be able to follow up uh, with his own ult and with his own poke in order to maybe hit the more fragile members like the Vayne and Velkaz. That's, that's the three Vs. Vayne, Velkaz, Vi. What are other V champions that I'm thinking of if, if, if we had other... Uh, hold on. V champions. League. <laughs> Volibear. Yeah, Volibear top. Could have done that. Uh, and then the Varus or Vagar, yeah, yeah, Vagar mid and Volibear top. That's that should have been the real flex, or or Vladimir top. That would have been the true flex, I think. If you if you matched all of your champions with the same letter, uh, but it's going to be hitting us with the spectate once again. Uh, so we're going to be taking a quick break. When we come back, game two, Illinois Tech on the map early with the one and O against Wheaton College. Stay tuned.
Alrighty, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to get ourselves into Game 2 of the Illinois Tech versus Wheaton College JV team matchup. IIT, if you were with us here earlier, we saw IIT take a pretty resounding victory Game 1 here with Darius getting himself into a like an 8-0 before he was finally stopped at the Nexus turrets. But um, still good performances all around from other IIT members, uh, Pirate Windows with a perfect KDA on the Zaya, um, and uh, a couple 1v1s that we saw across with the Kane. Going into though Game 2, it's going to be J-Mars on the Darius, Orimo on the Vi, as we see a roster switch actually, as we saw Cheese and Eggs was on the Kane Game 1, now we see Orima on the Vi, so a little bit of uh, roster switch, always good to see when we have uh, more diverse players across the map instead of just a, a instead of just a traditional five. In my opinion, Disparogi though now onto the Fizz. Pirate Windows here again, but this time onto the Vein, and it's going to be helped out with Wicked Scotty onto that Velkai. So that's a pretty spooky uh bot lane to be in. Vein early game not as fun, especially against with a bunch of Ash arrows to the face. But it's going to be looking like we're at a all kill uh kill for kill lane as no teleports are seen on either side of the team so both sides are going to be looking to gun for that first blood kill as fast as they can we're going to likely see fights happening all throughout the game iit going to be going in with their invade level one it's going to be spotted out by the blue word in the tri bush they know that that's not available it's going to actually be spotted out by zach nafin as he gets a q to land on a couple members here j Morris giving out his dab on that level one but uh that's gonna be it so uh we get scotty though put out a queue of his own not gonna tag any members should spook enough uh doesn't look like wheaton knows that iit is not looking for any more but uh morgana starting queue early yeah that's fine sometimes i'd like to start w if i know that my ADC can follow up, and and it's a uh, particularly useful to uh, scare your enemy ADC into farming, to, into not farming. Excuse me. It's going to be a traditional start again, though. It's going to be Zach going with the red and Vi going with the blue. And again, we're going to keep our eyes at that three minute mark to see what happens if we're going to be seeing a potential gank in the top lane. Um, Orima, though, likely the clear we'll see will be. Uh, it's going to be the ground wolves and red then and probably a potential gank velkas in wait in the bush here but not going to be seeing anything oh my goodness what morgana at the maximum of maximums uh is able to land that q onto pirate windows to get a nice little shot on it but that's going to be ash actually with zero cs still not even electing to use the w yet to farm but that's okay yeah that's okay uh looks like She's already spooked enough, but don't forget, Vein range is ridiculously small. Uh, Zareth, though, using a lot of uh, pressure already to push Fizz to just about half health. It's going to be keeping him spry. Level 2 going to be hit here for uh, pretty much at the same time for both bot lanes, so won't see any kind of level two initiations doesn't look like any either either team wants to be going for a quick kill at that sort but wicked scotty landing a couple shots is actually going to be chunking down a, a pretty fragile ash with already a decent amount of damage it's gonna be disparogi looking for a trade of his own as he goes for the q dive but gonna eat himself right out should hopefully be okay we might actually be seeing the three minute gank come in for the mid lane perhaps We'll definitely try to keep an eye on that. Darius, though, on his own. Look at that CS lead. 13 CS already. Not Mundo not having the best of times. Looking like he might just be going for that pick to the to the durability to be able to last under the brunt of the Darius damage. But J Mars could be looking for a potential. Uh he's look Forces the flash out early from the Mundo. It's going to actually be the smite secured by Orima. And Zach without the uh oh oh no uh zach without the smite i think losing losing out on the smite fight at least it's going to be uh having to be able to get the scuttle it's going to be zareth taking a decent amount of damage it's going to be forcing out the flash from zach Fien, but without the blue buff available not too many options in order anymore uh to, to prevent 
a future gank potential. A couple pings, they do have to drift that Vi might be in the area somewhere still looking for a kill. And again, looking like IIT puts a lot of faith in their bot lane to just stay consistent, go even into 2v2 trades as long as they have good vision, they're okay. We're kind of putting a little bit of harass onto the pool, but that should just be helping uh, Pirate Windows allow him to push the lane to where he wants to go. Uh, if we're still commenting on the 2v2 bot lane, though, if we're not going to be seeing kills actually come across through uh, through the bot lane, we might just have to wait until the level 6 initiation. Initiation will be stronger from uh, Wheaton's College. The Ash ult is uh, always a great way to start fights off, especially if you follow it up before or after with the Zac E. Um, Quick Scotty though, still relatively healthy, but a Morgana Q could change that. Still trying to put some poke where he can. Uh, already a couple leads already we can see in our favor. Mundo still with only four CS available is going to, is still getting, uh, unfortunately, the uh, shorter shorter end of the stick here. Uh, with uh, Against Darius with already about 500 of his gold lead, practically a kill. And one of the things that we haven't commented normally is uh, is bounties, because that system still applies for CS as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and Darius, without his flash available, could be looking at a potential first blood. It's going to be able to get a decent amount of damage. It's going to be maybe one or two more kills here. It's not going to likely be enough, though. Jmar is taking pretty... No, I'm mistaken. Hold on, let's see how close that was. Uh... Let's see, one, two, three, gets the ghost, four, and then he just needed to one more, the W is actually just the thing that finishes him off, 19, 29, okay, yeah. So, a first blood here coming already for Darius with only the ghost being needed to use, not even the flash to follow up with it. Uh, Fizz going, uh, actually has not backed yet, still only with the corrupting potion, and she, he has no corrupting potions left, actually. Uh, Zareth has already backed in the meanwhile. It's going to be Vi coming in for a gank. This is Cesaris with no flash available. This could be a kill coming across. It's going to be coming in for Arima. Does it have the damage to follow through? IIT members barely holding on. Zach looking for a potential E. Or could we just be going for the Raptors? Do they want to go for it? Zach is hungry for it. He does have the E available. Does he want to go for the dive? I don't think you're going to have the damage for that. And 10 HP left here for the Zach. Does IIT want to converge on this? Now, actually. No, it's going to be the Wolves that finish it off. And But Zach with the respawn, can he help out? The Wolves are going to do it for him. <laughs> Alright, Wolves MVP. Uh, going to sign the contract to have him on IIT within the next day. Great. What a... Uh, that's an unfortunate ha happenstance there. Um... Two kills to Wolves. OP. Uh, but it's going to be another level uh, 6 versus 6 here matchup. Four Rejuvenation Beats on this window is not going to help you against Darius. <laughs> Sorry, friend. It's not. It doesn't work that fast. But uh, Fizz able to get a kill. Is it going to be coming back into lane with the Sheen and Aether? Uh... So with hitting the level 7, does have the potential to go for an all-in against Zacafine, but Zacafine is going to be looking for a Roma of his own as IIT is extending past the river. Pings coming out from Fizz, thinking that they are worried of it, but there is a healthy ward with about 30 seconds left on the timer. They should have to read on it, though. No TPs available. Keep that in mind. Pirate Windows going for a couple of trades of their own. They look like they want to commit, perhaps, for this. It's going to be Fizz actually roaming down on his own. He's not going to actually see Zacafine in the bush. But now Fizz is in a bit of a pickle here. He's going to be looking for an all-in of his own. Zac E going to miss out onto here. Likely not going to see any more action. A little bit of a roam from Pirate. But that's all it will yield. As Vayne is now left alone in a 1v2. Um, if I was any better. Well, actually, no. Excuse me. The Morgana actually did go up. I guess for emotional support, so we're only going to see 1v1s. Um, but neither ADC actually willing to back yet, <laughs> interestingly enough. Uh, 
So it's going to be the supports with the items that have to start things off. Frostfang boots and then Frostfang crystal boots uh, here. Good. Always good. I like to see Velkaz with the with the control wards. That beats out crystal. Uh, that beats, beats out crystal any day for division score. Especially against the sack. As you can prep that gank potential. Um, and trust me. With Velkaz, if you land more than two abilities, you're fine as a support. You won't need any more. <laughs> um, but the Morgana, I guess she wants to... I'm not sure what the Sapphire Crystal intention is. I guess just because she likes to spam abilities? I don't know. Jmars, though, with another Ghost Initiation, still able to do so much damage. And it's looking like another stomp here, but Disparogi in a tight spot. No flash available. One more auto? It's not going to be enough, though. Vi with Orima with her ult on of her own available. It's going to be follow up. Zareth going to be using the barrier. Does he have the damage to finish it off? No. No Ignite will be there to help out. Orima starting to be taken dangerously low. Going to have to queue himself straight out there. But Pirate and Wicked Scotty here to make their own statement. Wicked Scotty kind of in a tight spot. If, he, if Morgana lands that queue, he is in dangerous trouble. But the uh, flash here from... Ash, wait, what? Okay, uh, yeah, ping's coming out. Don't think that the, the Zach is also confused about that. I don't think you have to damage. Zach just does not play like to have damage with that. He is only there to absorb the damage and initiate fights, but uh, it's okay. IIT, Wicked Scotty going to be able to get the kill entirely for himself and in the same time able to use the Ash Flash. Uh, good read on Wicked Scotty to be able to follow up with it. Uh, it's going to be... Definitely helpful, and as uh, so much as it's appreciated for Veins to get kills, uh, you don't need kills in the, with this kind of team to help yourself out. Disparogi, though, still having a hard time to be able to make a dominant performance against this era, but he's still keeping a lead of his own with only 10 CS. Hitting the 11-minute mark right now, actually, 4K, C, 4K gold lead, and the first turret in contention here with top lane here, again, with only about 1K left. Uh, it's going to be Stopwatch, Bammy's... What is he building? Is it Sunfire? I'm sorry, I was speculating. I just completely missed mid 1v1 kill, but taking a quick back at it, we're, we're going to see the Fizz likely just start things off with the ult. The charge not going to be landing. Nice dodge here on the ability. It's just going to be the domination coming through. One more auto will do it. There it goes. Both the flash available for Vayne. I want to see the Vayne make an aggressive play, but uh, likely just not going to be able to happen. Just the poke and uh, just all of that damage coming through for them is just not enough. The Ash E is going to spot out that Vido. Looks like she's going to take her sweet time, though, coming all the way around. Uh, Zach Go going to start off his himself with the 2v1 potential. Can they even pl outplay this? This is a huge Darius at 3-0. and Going to be starting things off. Taking about to the half health, but that damage is there. Flash available for Jmars. He wants to be going for kills. It's going to be forcing the flash out from the Zach. Can they go for the 1v1? Jmars still confident in his ability. Actually dodging out onto the Cleaver. It's going to be the kill going over to the Darius again. But in another fight... All across the map, all the way in the bot side. There is here winning out, but in the same time, getting the kill into Ash. Oh, good lord. A nice flash Q play from Morgana, at least in order to be able to salvage something from that situation. Even the well played coming out from the morgue. Same. <laughs> uh, but Zach, without his. Uh, does have passive, but with no flash, it's not going to even be able to have the wherewithal to finish off the Gromp. It's going to be first turret coming on to Darius, and with a 75 CS lead, basically, it's putting him at 4k of basically a full item ahead of this Mundo. Mundo not having, having completed even one, Darius is going to already have to Triforce at his first, at his like second back, maybe? Can't really recall. And again, no TPs means that all of the fight is just going to be stuck in lane likely. We're not going to be seeing any TP hero plays, but Zara's starting off his ult. Nice couple dodges from Disparoki, and he misses every single one of them. Is he trying to bait something out? What? 
Gonna be Zara spending a lot of resources there. Uh, no flash available either. Oh my. <laughs> okay. I guess a nice little sidestep to dodge the uh, my cube, but that's not going to be enough eventually as IIT makes quick work of the Zara there. And Zakafine is going to be 0 and 3 now as we go into 13 minutes. And again, to 2v2. IIT still holding strong. Why do you pop your pot? Uh, I mean, I guess he was just scared to pull. What's the work maxing? Four points. Okay, well, she's maxing Q, so she's doing it right. So I don't know why she's so scared. A lot of pings coming across, though. It's going to be Jmar's going to be looking for another kill of his own. Kuro left with nothing available, unfortunately. No flash either. It's going to just going to be a slow and eventual painful death. Uh, does I... If I know the situation, if I if they had the vision, yeah, I uh, Wheaton with no vision here on the river does not order the Velkaz is not there. They are pinging it. They had the feeling that they're not around, but oh god. Okay, uh, nothing more. It's going to be Vayne now taking the backseat, letting the Velkaz do his roaming. He is going to be able to actually see the blue ward is going to be able to spot the Velkaz, but he's going to be able to get the scuttle on his, his own. As we go into a fight here into the inside the blue jungle, it's going to be this Rogue going for the flash of his own, forcing out the Zac passive. Hold on. These fights are going. This is nuts. This is actually nuts. I can't keep track of you guys fighting at the same time. Oh my god. Ash ult doesn't think it's going to actually land on anyone, but they are likely distracted by watching the arrow is going to be a perfect opportunity for Pirate to finally be able to get the kill and get himself onto the map with the Bork available as well. Morgana helpless and able to do anything for that. And that's going to be an 8 and 0 Darius. I don't know what was going through Wheaton's spine without the ban. Like, maybe they just thought that, oh, you know, we can't do anything so it doesn't matter what we ban. Uh... The resources have to be, you have to consider, like, if you can't beat the top lane, then you have to make sure you pick choose your bands accordingly so you can wait on your other lanes. And I guess that's maybe what they tried to do here with the bot lane, maybe, but uh, trying to force Pirate onto the vein, taking out his, uh, Caitlyn Sivir, maybe, but, um... You know, a couple times that we saw these Velkaz rows, but but uh, Wheaton unable to collapse. Doesn't leave me too hopeful. Turret planning has already fallen down, though. IIT, I think, got maybe one or two chunks here in the bot lane. Um, Darius is going to be looking for a room of his own. This Baroque still with a two-level advantage. Is that going to be looking for the E of his own? It's going to be nicely dodged out. But... Jmar is there, and it's going to be now a 2v3 situation as Mundo... Looks like he wants to help out, but the fight is already over. Mundo should be back into the lane, but could be walking right into Darius. He does have the ghost coming up soon. It's already going to be forcing the flash out. Oh, that's going to be rough. To see. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. But in that meantime, as Mundo was roaming down, IIT already setting themselves up for a fight here. They do have some vision coverage here. IQ not going to be able to reach over. Do they just want to flash initiate? It's going to be able to actually catch out to Morgana. Nice Q avoiding here. It's just going to be following up with that. Do they want to be going any more for the Zack? Zack's going to be starting off with his ult. Nice knock up there. No passive there to help out. This Brogy wants to go for a kill of his own. And he's going to be just able to quickly take it out. But Ash is going to be here. Do they want to go for a dive? It's going to force it out. The flash from the Ash already. Oh. No. Jmars is going to be waiting in lying in wait for the bush at this point just a preemptive if they go for the dive he's already confident enough in the turret dive no flash available either and that's uh, gonna just cement iit there to just i think go for a uh go for the 2-0 here unfortunately we in not able to mobilize correctly against the team fighting that iit has um available too many kills from the Mundo, unfortunately, is putting the Darius at an insane level. I think he's actually, when he backs, he's going to be like two and a half items at 17 minutes. That's, uh, hold on. It's going to be the Q to actually keep him alive and healthy. Uh, not going to be able to kill him as four members collapse. V Pirate Windows wants to be going for some kills of his own. Not going to be seeing much. He does not have to ult available. I think that's all we're going to be seeing. Looking like IIT is pinging stuff for the Dragon Scuttle is available. Lane is pushing here for the bot to finish it off. That's going to be now a 12k gold lead here for uh, for the Hawks. 
no jungler available either means that they should be able to make quick work with this Ocean Drake. Particularly helpful for a lot of the fighting that we've been seeing again uh, all across the map. Zack wants to go for initiation of his own, but in the 2v3, completely flubs the uh, ult there. And this could be Pirate Windows looking at his first death of the game, uh, second death of the game. Nice flash there to avoid it. Will they have the damage to follow it through? No, the arrow barely able to sidestep it, but IIT, uh, Wheaton commits four members. Does IIT want to go for Collapse or Rima here? Could be in a dangerous pinch position. No war is actually going to be seen here. They do want to get the fight started off here. Orima, without the ult available, is going to be in a really tight spot. And likely getting too aggressive there to try to avenge the vein. It's going to have uh, Divide fall. Little bit of breathing space here, but again, this is Darius. No one addressing the problem with the Darius as he makes going to make quick work of this tier 2 tower. Looking like Wheaton's best bet right now that they've elected to do is just to fight as a 5 man no matter what. Um, is going to be spotted out by the ward. But he's going to go right back out and uh, let IIT push themselves toward the mid tier 2. They try to slowly make their way for some vision, but this is already starting to fight. He wants to go for the 1v4, it looks like. He's going to be already getting the kill started against the Morgana. Taking a decent amount of damage, but one more auto could kill him off. It's going to be taking one more kill to it. It's going to be able to walk away into 1v4 with two kills to his name. Um, Vi wants to be looking for a kill of her own, but... Vayne coming here for a room for herself, not prioritizing the bid tier 1. It's going to go actually for a straight up 1v... Oh god. Zach barely able to walk around, no one there to help. The Valkos is there actually. The damage from the minions is enough to be able to finish it off. Flaskino going to be able to actually get the kill. But Vi wants to go in for a kill for herself, it's going to be instantly taken out. Uh... It's going to be a decent amount of damage there from Pirate Windows. One more kill could do it. The Zera shot not able to finish off the Velkaz. Wheaton showing signs of life now against able to take some of these fights kind of even, but could be too, a little bit too late. Pirate Windows getting a stun there on the Zera. It's going to be taken down pretty low. But all in the meantime, IIT still making sure that they're coming out ahead of the objectives with Fizz taking down the tier 2 in the bot lane. Vayne going to be taking the blue buff for herself as well. And again, no one still addressing the issue with the Darius is uh, likely still having the favor uh, map favoring IIT here for sure. Gonna be Zach starting things off again. He does have his E coming up. This playful trickster is at the ready, but Morgana Q not going to land. But Darius coming from behind could prove dangerous here for him. He's gonna be getting the Steric started things off. Do they have the damage to follow through? That's gonna actually hurt the Mundo. He has no MR. Uh, they flashing for the Darius, in fact. They want the kills on him to do what they can, but the damage is not there. Jmars is too strong. One more auto could do it. No. Deep passive gonna come through. Uh, GG's coming out for sure. But unfortunately, I think that might be it for, uh, oh, good lord. This Barovia is hungry for those kills. Nice stopwatch there to stop it all, to, uh, keep him healthy. Oh my god. IIT is relentless. 
trading almost all of their sums in that last fight to be able to finally get themselves bro uh, uh, breaking into the blue space here. First inhib turret going to be falling, first inhib going to be falling. Any more fights to come across? Looking like pings are coming in here for the infernal. I can't believe he would actually say GG in the, when the game's not actually over. The ward's going to actually be able to spot them out here, but uh, are we going to be seeing any more kills? It's going to be Zakafine getting something onto Orima, but Jmars is going for something of his own. He's going to loop himself all the way around for the Mundo. Make quick work of him. Do they want to be going for any more kills? Ocean Drake keeping everyone relatively healthy. Ooh. Barrier and flash being used from the Xerath, but there's going to be no damage to follow up with that. Oh, good grief. A little bit of a heal to help Jmars out just a bit. But with the mem all five members coming up here in the next two, three seconds, it's going to be IIT onto the retreat now, finally. You can E, Zach. You can condemn Zach's E. Oh my god. It's going to be starting it off with the Condemn onto the Zack, but there's no damage to follow up. Wicked Scotty has his ult available if he wants to even go for a fight. Why aren't you ulting? This is practically 2v5. Vayne is popping now. She's hungry for these kills. Can she take that damage and abuse? I don't know. Lifesteal to help her things out. Nice Q dodge. Oh good lord. IIT now in a 2v4 position, practically. Pirate Windows very ahead now, as opposed to what we saw in game 1 with only a couple kills coming across. 9 and 2 to her name. Ginsu's and Bork available. Um, and at this point, it just looks like they need to maybe do one more back or, or one more push to be able to close things out. But yeah, three times the gold. That's insane from uh, J Mars today. MVP for sure, going out to him at the end of this series. Still want to be going for the fight. Zach's not going to be able to land anything, but the passive from Vayne is just shotting right through her. She wants to go for the kill on herself. Vayne ready to reply. That's going to be a decent amount of damage. Can she follow it up with it? Look at that damage coming through. It's going to be finally shut down, though, from the Xerath. Not going to be able to land too many shots. It's going to be putting her pretty low. Woo! Arima definitely going to be spooked now. But, uh... Darius. <laughs> with Ohm Wrecker of all things. Good lord. <laughs> I, th I think that's... Uh... <laughs> uh that's, just, that's just rude. <laughs> Ignore towers at that point. Uh, I don't. I forget if it works during if it works against inhib turrets. Uh, excuse me, nexus turrets. I think it does work on nexus turrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Looks like IIT are going to close things pretty traditionally. The ash arrow is going to spot them as they head over to the Baron. Decent amount of vision control here is going to have IIT keep the players in check. Darius is going to be lying in wait inside the bush. Zach without the uh, lens, though, it's not going to help out too much. They know that the members are hovering around there. They want to be going for the fight. It's not going to be landing. What the f It's not going to be landing anything. It's going to be Fizz going all in against the Zeras first. Going to be using his uh, damage just coming straight through. Mundo not in the right position is going to have the JMR's flash right in. And he looks like he wants to go for the fight. Is he going to use... The oh, Ohm Wrecker actually being used. What a player. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> what a mad lad. <laughs> you don't even need it. That's the funny thing. It's just like he's so big. He doesn't even need it. It's just like the pure amount of flex necessary to close out this game. Both Nexus turrets now taken out. Nexus exposed here. It's now... Just a matter of time until the Nexus falls. Pirate Windows being the respectable captain that he is. Is going to finish things off. And that's going to be GG coming through in the chat. Let me see it. Well played. Well played. Um, 
you know, despite all of the abuse that the Mundo saw, we still had Ash with less damage. Interesting. Not even with the Thormil to do that. Stop. Stop. Uh... Yeah, I I think they had could have the the two v two you know in both games. I thought they held pretty even. I mean, the CS lead for Pirate wasn't like insane to the point that they couldn't do anything. I just think like the Morgana, if she looked for more picks, if they maybe coordinated their two v two fighting ability, uh, they maybe have a better chance. But um, you know, I don't know too much about what the Wheaton team, you know, how how rigorous their practice is. But it seems like. Uh, Finally met their match today. I think they were currently... They used to be undefeated, but now this is their first loss. IIT still remaining at only one loss for themselves, which is... Uh, which is uh, going to put them at 3-1 and one at the end of this week. So, end of week 5, 3-1 here for the Hawks. One of them, one of the games not reported because of a bye. Um, MVP for this round, definitely the J Mars for sure. Just able to stomp all over Wheaton's top lane. Um... And yeah, really cool stuff to see what they're doing. I think um, the practice is starting to pay off here as they're definitely getting themselves to be able to build into rhythm. They've definitely got the Darius comp down pat. Uh, we have yet to really see a team be able to actually contest that Darius to the point of uh, if they either either forcing him out to ban. But I don't think I've seen yet a game where he's been able to lose necessarily his 1v1 against the Darius. So he's definitely going to be a player we're going to have to keep our eyes on in the future matchups if we continue to cast these T3 games. That's going to do it for us today, though. Uh, appreciate everyone being able to stop by for today's stream. Uh, thanks for some of the feedback. Bro, this guy needs to chill with all the talking. I will do my best uh, to moderate my my, my uh, dialogue then. Thank you, King Chris. Your wish is mine to command. Um, but I got some feedback last week about trying to put some music in the meantime for pick and ban. I did I did it for the first game. I forgot to do it for the second game. <laughs> um, but let's uh, do a quick update of the scores. It's going to be 2-0 here, seeing ourselves now with IIT taking it now 3-1 and one for the season. That's going to do it for us today. Uh, I don't have any cast for the rest of today. We might see some uh tomorrow for overwatch so if you are interested in that game uh be sure to uh tune in tomorrow we i usually go live around 7 p.m central um but for today i think i'm gonna end the stream today got a friendsgiving to go to later so for those that are watching hope you guys are planning out your thanksgiving with either friends family loved ones and all of it but um i don't know if we'll have a matchup like in two weeks when it's thanksgiving weekend so uh, I'll keep you guys posted on to that, but again, all of that social media stuff, Discord, Twitter, Facebook, follow us on all of that. Appreciate everyone that uh, is enjoying the stream, that's watching the stream, and um, that'll do it for today. Thanks, everyone. Owen Moy, signing out.